A pleasant day to everyone. This is Mr. Brian T. Cruz, your General Physics 1 instructor for this semester. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss about measurements, a way of life. And per our learning objectives for this morning, we're going to have the following. Number one, solve measurement problems involving conversions of unit. Number two, express the unit of measurement in scientific notation form. For this slide, let's have first the definitions of measurement. The first is numbers which describe living and non-living things. Second, quantitative description of a fundamental property or physical phenomenon. Third, describe such quantities as length, weight, area, volume, and time. And lastly, comparison of physical quantity with a standard. Let's proceed now to the different systems of measurement. So the first one is the local or the obsolete system. During the early times class, ancient people are using their body parts in measuring. So the first one, let's have cubit, which is the distance from a man's elbow to the tip of his middle finger. Next is palm, which is the width of a person's four fingers, excluding the thumb. And they said that one cubit is equivalent to seven palms. Third is uncia, which is the weed of a person's thumb. Next is the yard, which is the distance from a tip of a person's nose to the tip of his middle finger. And they said that one yard is equivalent to three feet. Aside from body parts that they are using in measuring, our ancient people also used these such instruments just like the sundials in measuring time, and also, in the different parts of the world, they have this what we call different system of measurement during the early time. And one of the proof of this is in even in our country, which have the non-standard unit of measurements. So the first one is dama or palm, which is the width of the palm. Next is dali or the digit or the breadth of the finger. Third is talampakan or foot, which is the length of a foot. Next is Timuro or the length of the forefinger, Hakbang or a single stride, Dakot, a handful used to measure the amount of grain such as corn and palay. And aside from it, they are using this gusi, a jar used to measure the volume of liquid such as tuba and vinegar, Kaing or a container used to measure amounts of harvested fruits or vegetables, like mangoes, tomatoes, and salts, and also dangkal from the tip of a thumb and the tip of a middle finger. And dipa from a tip of a right middle finger to the tip of the left middle finger. Piling, which is used in banana, tumpok, usually we can see still in the public market. When you want to tell someone how big or how far away something is, you need to have a common system for communicating this information. There are two most common systems of measurement, the metric system, which is widely used in Europe and most of the rest of the world, and an imperial or British system or the English system, which is commonly used in USA. The English system was originally formalized by the British Weights and Measure Acts in 1824 in order to provide rapidly developing industrial society with much needed consistency. However, this was a half century after American independence and a system used in the U.S. is based on the earlier 18th century British system. Two are predominantly the same, but they are some different, such as the measurements of volume sometimes to watch out for in recipes. The British imperial system used units such as pounds and ounces for mass, miles, yards, feet, and inches for distance, pints and gallons for volume, and they have almost more than 20 base units in The metric system was officially adopted as a standardized system of measurement by the French in the late 18th century, although it was invented over a century earlier. All of the units in the metric systems are in multiples of 10. It means that calculation can be done as decimals, so multiples of units can be calculated by dividing and multiplying by 10 and its power. 
This is much easier to work out in your head and it is easily adaptable in all sorts of applications, particularly in science and engineering. Here are some of the Greek prefixes attached to the base units. The Greek prefixes are indication whether the value is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1, which is the base unit. So like deci, which is actually 1 times 10 raised to negative 1, and yocto, which is small y, which is 1 times 10 raised to negative 24. And because of the two systems of measurement, here are some metric English conversion in terms of length, volume, and mass. The international systems of unit abbreviated as SI from the French Le Systeme International de Unites is the modern form of the metric system. It is the system of unit that is general conference on weights and measures had agreed upon and it is legally enforced in almost all parts of the world. And this is based from the physical quantities such as the fundamental quantities and the derived quantities. When we are talking about fundamental quantities, these are the basic quantities which are commonly measured or can be measured directly using different measuring devices. While if we are talking about derived quantities, this is actually a combination of fundamental or other derived quantities and can be determined by using formula. The International Systems of Unit of Measurements or SI units or the official system of measurement used throughout the world, especially in scientific applications, is based upon the metric system units. All SI units can be formed by a combination of seven base units, as you can see in this table. The fundamental quantities and their SI units are derived from seven base units of measurement and each of which are defined in terms of fundamental scientific constant as described in this presentation. So let's have the first one, the length. Length is actually the measure of linear distance and has a unit of measurement which is m or meter. It is defined in terms of the constant speed of light in a vacuum which is C is equal to 2.99 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second. Another SI unit of measurement is the mass, which can be defined as the object's inertia or resistance to change in motion. Its SI unit is kilogram or kg, and this is defined in terms of the fundamental Planck's constant H, which is 6.624 times 10 raised to negative 34 kilogram meters squared per second. Have you heard the question how long would it take for an object to travel or how cold or hot an object is? This pertains to the number 3 and number 4 SI units of measurements which is the time and temperature. When we are talking about time, this is a measure how long an object travels and it has a unit of measurement which is second and this defined as the time it takes for a session 1 to 3 atom to oscillate which is 9.192 times and raised to 9 times. And the fourth one, just like what I've mentioned, is temperature which is measured the average energy per molecule in a substance. The SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. This unit Kelvin is defined in terms of fundamental Boltzmann constant K which is 1.381 times 10 raised to negative 23 joule per Kelvin. The fifth and number six as a unit of measurement is very familiar to you because when you have your grade 10 science, you learn this in your physics class, the luminous intensity and the electric current. And luminous intensity is a measure of intensity of light. The SI unit of luminous intensity is candela, and it is defined in terms of luminous efficacy of radiation frequency, which is 540 times 10 raised to 12 hertz, while electric current is the measure of rate of charge passing through a point. And the SI unit of electric current is ampere or capital A. Sometimes it is AMP or AMP. It is defined in terms of elementary charged particle, which is E, is equal to 1.602 times 10 raised to 19 Coulomb. And lastly, number 7 as a unit of measurement is the amount of substance. It is the number of substance containing as many atoms or molecules. The SI unit for this is mole 
or MOL, one unit of substance contain exactly 6.02 times and raised to 23 particles. Particles can be an ion if it is a charged atom, atom, or molecules. Elementary items also known to be the Avogadro's number. Here are some of the derived quantities and their SI unit of measurement. These physical quantities are the derived quantities that we're going to show you is based from the fundamental quantities. Just like what I've told you a while ago, derived quantities can be solved using formula. So just like area, which has a unit of m squared, volume, which is m cube, density, which is kilogram per meter cube, velocity, which is meter per second, force, which is kilogram meter per second squared or newton, pressure, which is newton per meter squared, and acceleration, which is meter per second squared. So let's apply what we have learned into sample problems. So directions, convert the following and express the answers in scientific notation. If necessary, apply the SF rule. So for number 1 to 5, you may look for the solution on the attached video on the next slide. So let's have these sample problems. So directions, convert the following and express the answers in scientific notation if necessary. Apply the SF rule. So we have number 1. So for number 1, we have 20 meters. We need to convert it into kilometers. We all know that 1 kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. Using the conversion factor, we can put 20 meters, open close parentheses, 1,000 meters, 1 kilometer. Why did I put 1,000 meters below? So that we, we can cancel the unit of measurement meters here. So, multiplying the value 20 times 1, we have 20 kilometers over 1,000. So, if we're going to divide it, we have 0 0.02 kilometers. But since we are asked to use the scientific notation form of this, and it is in decimal form, therefore, we can say that if we are going to move the decimal point from the here, going to the right 1, 2, we have 2 times 10 raised to negative 2 kilometers. So that will be the answer for number 1. Let's try sample number 2. So for example number 2, we have 50 seconds. We need to convert this into minutes. So we all know that 1 minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So therefore, 50 seconds, open close parenthesis. So since this is 50 seconds here, we're going to put 60 seconds below the line. And we put 1 minute on top. So we have canceled the second unit. So 50 times 1, we have 50 minutes over 60 seconds. So therefore, if we're going to simplify it, 50 divided by 60, we have 0 0.83 minutes. But since it is 1 SF based on the given that we have, we can say that it is 0 0.8 minutes. And in the scientific notation, 8 times 10 raised to 1 minute. So let's have example number 3. So we have here 100 
megahertz to be converted into hertz. Hertz is the unit or the base unit for the frequency, just what you have learned when you were, when you were in grade 10 in waves. So we all know that 1 megahertz is equal to 1 times 10 raised to 6 hertz based on the conversion factor that we have in the slides that I gave you a while ago. So therefore, using the conversion unit of measurement, so 100 megahertz, open close parenthesis, 1 megahertz is 1 times 10 raised to 6 hertz. So cancel out at megahertz as a unit of measurement, we have 1 times 10 raised to 10 hertz. So that's the answer for number 3. So let's have number 4, 45 microhertz converted into millihertz. So we all know that 1 microhertz, micro, is equivalent to 1 times 10 raised to negative 6. And your milli, 1 milli, is equivalent to 1 times 10 raised to negative 3. So using the conversion unit of measurement, 45 times 1, we have 1 times 10 raised to negative 6 microhertz, open and close parenthesis, so 1 times 10 raised to negative 6 microhertz over 1 times 10 raised to negative 3 millihertz. Simplifying the two, we need to remove this unit of measurements. So therefore, we have 45 times 1 exponent negative 3, we have 0 0.045 mil, my, milli hertz. Since we are following as a rule and it should be in scientific notation, therefore we need to move the decimal point. So from here, we need to move to the right. So 1, 2. So we have 4.5 times 10 raised to negative 2 micro hertz. Do not forget to box your answer if you are going to solve something in the sample problems that we are going to have also. So let's have sample number 5 which is 15 meters per second convert into kilometers per hour. But first let's have the conversion unit of measurement here. So we all know that 1 kilometer is equivalent to 1000 meters and let's have also 1 hour is equivalent to 3600 seconds. So let's convert using the conversion factor 15 meters per second open close parenthesis. So since we have two units to be converted we need to use also two conversion factor also. So first since this is meter we need to put 1000 meters here which one kilometers on top and seconds we have 3600 seconds over one hour cancel the unit to be cancelled so therefore 15 times 1 times 3 6 we have 54 thousand kilometers over 1000 Rs. So simplify it by dividing the 54,000 kilometers by 1,000 R. We have 54 kilometers per R. And following the SF rule, so we have to SF, okay, but we need to convert into scientific notation. So therefore, we have move it going to that. So five. 0.4 times 10 raised to 1 kilometers per hour. 
Okay, so aside from the 1 to 5 that we have, we have here another set of sample problems and you may look for the solutions on the next slide. So let's try to solve this. What if the unit of measurement is squared? So therefore, for example, let's have number 1, 55 meter squared, convert into feet squared. So we all know that in a base unit of measurement, 1 meter is equivalent to 3.28 feet. But since there is a square on both of the unit of measurement, what are we going to do is we need to square the equivalent value of 1 meter into feet. So therefore, 1 meter squared is equivalent to 3.28 squared is equivalent to 1.08 times 10 raised to 1 feet squared. So since we already have this, we can now proceed to the conversion. So 55 meters squared, open close parenthesis for the unit conversion. So we have 1 meter squared equivalent to 1.08 times 10 raised to 1 feet squared. So we can now cancel the unit. So 55 times 1.08 times 10 raised to 1 feet squared is equal to 5.92 times 10 raised to 2 feet squared. But since we only have 2 SF here, so therefore, the answer will be 5.9 times 10 raised to 2 feet squared. So that will be the answer for number 1. Okay, let's try to solve number 2, which is an example of a derived unit of measurement. So, we have here 120 meters per second squared, which is the unit for acceleration, converted to kilometers per r squared. So, what are we going to do first? We need to look for the equivalent of each unit of measurement. So, we all know that 1 kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. And 1 R a while ago is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. But if you will notice, in our given, the second E is squared. So therefore, we need to square it also both sides. So, square it natin. So we have 1 R squared is equivalent to 1.30 times 10 raised to 7 second squared. So we can now proceed to the conversion. So 120 meters per second, open close parenthesis. So we have squared. So 1.30 times 10 raised to 7 seconds squared over 1 R squared. Then on the other side, we have 1,000 meters in 1 kilometer. So cancel the unit of measurements. So we have 120 times 1.30 times 10 raised to 7 times 1, we have 1.59 times 10 raised to 9 kilometers over 1,000 R squared. So 1.59 times 10 raised to 9 squared divided by 1,000, we have 
times 10 raised to 6 kilometers per hour squared. Since we have 2 SF, so we need to follow the SF rule. So we have 1.6 times 10 raised to 6 kilometers per hour squared. So that will be the answer. For these sample problems, let's identify which of the following children are not allowed to ride the surf dance. So for the solution, you may look for the video attached to the next slide. Let's try to solve this sample problem. So children below 3 feet are not allowed to ride the surf dance. Who among the following will not be allowed to ride? Boy A, who is 0 0.75 meters. Boy B, who is 150 centimeters in height. Or C, boy C, who is 50 inches in height. So let's try to solve. So letter A first. So let's have 0 0.75 meters. So we all know that 1 meter is equivalent to 3.28 feet. So, 0 0.75 meters, open close parenthesis, 1 meter is 3.28 feet. Cancel the meter unit. We have, so press in your calculator, 0 0.75 times 3.28, we have 2 Point forty six feet. So that is the height of boy A. Let's proceed with boy B. Boy B, who is one hundred fifty centimeters in height. So we all know that one foot is equivalent to thirty point forty eight cm. So let's solve. So, 150 cm, open close parenthesis, 30.48 cm is equivalent to 1 foot. Cancel. So, 150 times 1 divided by 30.48 4.92 feet. And for letter C, we have boy C who is 50 inches in height. So 50 inches convert into feet. We all know that 1 foot is equivalent to 12 inches. So therefore, 12 inches below, 1 foot on top. So we have 50 times 1 divided by 12. We have 4.17 feet. So therefore, among the three, the only child who is not allowed to ride is boy A. Because his height is below 3 feet, which is 2.46 feet.